today we're going to unbox Picket Duty. Kamikaze Attacks Against U.S. Destroyers, Okinawa, 1945. This is a solitaire game design by Steve Dixon and published by Legion War Games. Let's take a look at the back of the box here. Okay. And it says here, by the time of the invasion of Okinawa in April 1945, the U.S. Navy devised a plan to help ward off the expected kamikaze attacks during the battle for the island. In order to provide an early warning system for impending kamikaze attacks, the U.S. Navy established 16 radar picket stations around the island. Destroyers manning these stations, in most cases, had a fighter direction team to coordinate and call fighters in a station to combat incoming kamikazes. Despite these efforts, the kamikazes still managed to get through and inflicted horrific damage to U.S. ships. Picket Duty is a solitaire game where you, as the captain of a Fletcher-class destroyer, must protect the fleet and fend off kamikaze attacks while performing picket duty off Okinawa. The game covers the time period from late March 1945 to late June 1945 to when you must survive. Needless to say, the task will not be easy. And you get an example of some of the counters here. Here's the uh, uh, Japanese kamikaze planes coming in here. Here's some of your crew and markers. And here is an example of the playing board. It is number of players is one. Uh, game complexity is medium. And solitaire suitability is high. This is a solitaire game. You get... Uh, one uh, 22 by 34 playing board, 20 page rule book, 24 page chart scenario book, 160 each, one and a point uh, two inch counters, game counters, and 240 each point uh, six inch game counters uh, for player aids. So let's take a look inside the box here and see what we have. I got this as part of the Consum World Community Support Drive Direct Discounts. So there was pretty good deals on there. You guys should really uh, check that out. Um, let's pick a duty. About a one inch box there. You get a bag of bags and some dice. Looks like you've got uh, two six and two ten sided there. You get rules of play. And this is the second edition uh, of the game. Don't know if there's really any changes uh, from the first or if it was more of a, a, a second printing. I'm not sure about that. So you've got a black and white rules. Looks like uh, it is 28 pages if you include the back chart there. And you've got a lot of charts in here. Here's designer notes on page 24. Option rules on page 22, and it's dual column, again, black and white, some imagery, but again, black and white, um, not super dense, but there you have the rules, and again, with most solitaire games, I imagine it's relatively linear, you're not going to have to follow a sequence of play and go through the... Um, go through the uh, sequence to play the game. Here is the charts and scenarios. It's kind of interesting here. Be a radio technician. Young men wanted for picket duty. It's kind of cool. Inquire at your nearest Navy recruiting station. So this is going to be your uh, charts and scenarios. So there's all kinds of charts in here. Uh, this is a, what I tend to call a charty game. You know, uh, one of the earlier ones of that was B-17. Uh, and uh, there's been a lot of uh, successors and uh, progeny that's come from that. And this is fits in that same vein. A lot of, lot of charts. And then I think you have some scenarios here. Like here's some scenarios at the end. Scenarios start on page 20. So you've got like 19 pages of charts. And then you've got certain scenarios here that you can uh, do. It's kind of cool. So it looks like there is... Looks like there's uh, eight scenarios and then a campaign. You, there's two different campaigns. There's a mini campaign and then a long campaign. Here's the counters. Well, nice big counters there. Look at those. 
very big. Uh, white core, kind of medium thickness there. So you got some of the planes that are coming in and then you have some of the crew members. A lot of this is gonna be managing your crew of your destroyer, moving them around, you know, putting out fires or manning guns or the like. Some more counters here of different planes that can come in and more crew for you. And they're just one-sided. And yet more planes that can come in and more crew. And some more planes, then some uh, markers here, and some more markers I get. This is your ship's guns here, and doing some targets, shot down, so some markers, spray fire, aft, midship, forward. Again, just one-sided, and these look like they're more administrative type markers, marking hits and trim and fuel supply. These are some kind of modifiers, maybe for your attacks. Here's hits and looks like some fire and such. So there you have it. Uh, again, a lot of this game is the charts. And then here is the, we get the map here. Let's pull out the map. Don't probably have enough room to look at it all. Pretty good sized map here. So you got the, the ship itself. And then you're going to have charts up here. Repair section one. This is repair section two. So you got forward, midship, and you'll probably have aft. Here's damage control, list and trim, Japanese attack waves. Here's a chart. Let's look at the other side here. You get the rest of the ship. And these are the different attack angles, I guess, where the planes will be coming in. And then you've got your fuel supply, ammo supply, hull integrity, maneuvering. Here's your repair section aft. Again, so you're going to be sending crew members around to uh, manage these different areas. Here's your assignment station. This is a little bit more of a higher level map of where you're going to be at around Okinawa. Ship morale, land radar, air fire support, and the like. So this is, this is basically your game board, which is basically the different sec sections of the ship that you're going to be uh, manning and trying to survive the different waves of attack. Uh, Legion tends to do this, put a little bit of colored paper in there. Here's your time record sheet. This is thicker stock, one-sided, little calendar here, but keeps track of your time records there. Here's your firing chart. Again, or firing charts, I should say, a little thicker stock here. Here's your secondary compartments hit sheet. So the different areas you get hit, here's aft, midship, forward, and then you have your different cabins here and different like trunk and shower head, all the different damage areas. Then you have your ship's log. So you can actually, you know, crew name, you can be, I guess you can personalize this uh, and keep track of you know, each ship and its different log. Again, this is thicker. Don't know if you'd want to um, you know, copy this and use this or, you know, laminate it and mark it up, but these look like they're, they're right for, you know, either copying or laminating to, to mark up. So that's what you get in a box of picket duty. Uh, this was, you know, kind of towards the end of the war. This is 45. Uh, at that point, uh, Japanese were relatively desperate um, and defending their uh, the homeland, and this was a pretty relatively you know horrific type of, or series of events where they would just take their uh, pilots and planes and try to make them aerial bombs uh, flying into um, U.S. forces. So uh, that's what you get in a box of uh, picket duty. Second edition. Hopefully this was helpful. If you like, please like. Uh, if you want to see more, please subscribe and hit that bell so you know when that's going to happen. Um, what's your thoughts on this? What do you think about Picket Duty? Have you played this version? Have you played the, the uh, first edition? Is there really any difference between the two? I have to read up on that a little bit. But what do you think about this in general, how this 
recreates that or simulates that. Uh, or if you have, you know, what do you think about solitaire games in general? This is again a, a solitaire uh, uh, specific uh, game that um, is is that's what it's meant for. So uh, appreciate any comments you have on it and and getting the discussion started. But most importantly, thanks for watching.